Hello, it's Scott Manley here. As you might know, for the past few days, I have been in Seattle, Washington, you know, checking out a number of things. I was here to talk to the developers of Kerbal Space Program 2 and give them my feedback on what they're doing. I spent a day at the Museum of Flight doing a virtual field trip with uh, you know, Das Valdez and friends, which is amazing. You should absolutely go to the museum if you ever come here. And yeah, I spent a day at PAX West with you know, gaming nerds. But I'm not going to talk about any of that. I'm going to talk about the tweet that came out this morning revealing, uh, well, basically from a cutting-edge US spy satellite. Um, so rolling back a couple of days, Iran were getting ready to launch a satellite using their Saphir launch vehicle from their Semnam launch site. That's a launch vehicle that's derived from a North Korean Rodong or Nodong missile. I actually have a video where I talk about how the these space programs, missile programs, all interrelate. It's worth watching it. But uh, I think it was th Thursday, a commercial uh, Im Earth imagery uh, company, Planet Labs, they uh, you know shared an image showing um, well it was on fire. I think their satellite had flown over at just the right time to catch the maximum amount of RUD on the ground. Now their satellites are like lunchbox size spacecraft with four inch, you know, 10 centimeter lenses. They're three U CubeSats and they have hundreds of these in space. So they are able to catch updates all across the world, basically every 24 hours. They can do Google Maps at three meter resolution every single day. And it's a great resource. Um, but the resolution was kind of lousy, three meter resolution. Later in that day, Maxar, who also do Earth imaging with better and bigger satellites, they obviously used this information to target one of their satellites and they showed a much better image, showing, you know, again, damage. They showed probably the rocket still attached to bits of it. So there's a speculation that the accident or incident happened while they were fueling or due to a, an electrical fault on the ground. And then today, across Twitter, the president essentially tweeted the latest version, uh, an image from what is probably a spy satellite current generation, KH-11. The image itself, by the way, is probably taken with a cell phone camera pointed at a screen or an image. You can see a reflection of the flash. I think you can see the outline of a hand. I'm sure there's people that are like reverse engineering this whole reflection. But what it did show was stunningly good resolution. Analysts estimate that the resolution is about 10 centimeters per pixel. Um, so to be clear, while this is a handheld image, it shows um, it shows like little annotations that were added by intelligence analysts. And you can see that towards the edge, those aren't quite straight because you can't hold the camera perfectly straight. But there is a black box in the top left, which is perfectly straight. So it's not like this image was snapped inside a secure facility and then immediately shared. Somebody then took that and said, no, you have to remove that and blacked it out. So I guess there was some review and redaction that happened before this came. But this is the first release of a photo from the current generation of spy satellites. To be clear, the launch, sorry, the origin, the source of this imagery wasn't revealed by the people posting it, but looking at the image, looking at the shadows, you can figure out what time it was taken, what angle it was taken, and looking at the satellite database maintained by uh, you know, satellite watchers, we were able to determine that it was probably USA uh, 224, so I had to check that down there, which we know it was launched as NROL 49. So yeah, it flew over the site at around the right time. It uh, actually had better chances. It flew much closer, but the one released was at a 46 degree angle. So based on the size of the pad that's known, based on the uh, angle and the distance, they figured out it's getting about 10 centimeter resolution, but they could have probably got maybe five to seven centimeter resolution. And this is an interesting number because we know the mirror sizes on these objects, on these spacecraft, probably about 2.4 meters. And if you know about physics and you know about diffraction limited object op optics, then you'll know that there is a fundamental physical limit you can reach in terms of resolution. And this is very close to that fundamental limit. You basically the wavelength of light causes anything to be fuzzy if you zoom in too much. So you either need a bigger mirror or a shorter wavelength of light. The reason we know, by the way, that uh, spy these spy satellites use 2.4 meter mirrors 
is because of uh, in the Hubble design documents there was a discussion of a larger mirror and the eventual decision was driven by the fact that if they reduced it to 2.4 meters on the Hubble they could use the same facilities that the National Reconnaissance or hardware was being built with. So yeah, there you go. And that is actually probably a pretty good reference point for when you're thinking about these uh, KH-11 satellites. They're likely very similar to the Hubble. They're big, they're cylindrical. They will have probably a door that opens up after launch, but none of these were launched on the space shuttle. They were all launched on Titans or Delta IVs. So the original KH-11 was launched in 1976 and uh, since then it's evolved a little. This particular one was launched in 2011 and it was actually, it's interesting because they were originally trying to switch things over. In 1999 they started something called the Future, I think it's called the Future Imagery Architecture. It was a book contract given to Boeing and five years later they were ridiculously behind schedule and over budget so they went back to Lockheed Martin and said please build us more of these but here's a few improvements. And this one launched in 2011 on board a Delta IV and it is a pretty spectacular launch if you look at the launch video. It has that familiar Delta IV fireball but it is even more spectacular than the ones we have these days. The reason is back then they were still using the RS-68 engine the new one has the RS-68A engine and that actually has some work to reduce the amount of hydrogen they have to run through the engines and therefore reduces the amount of big flames that we see. Uh, the mission patch was of course typical awesome NROL class with you know, Latin and scary implications of us, them watching us. So this is one of three that were launched with the Block 4 hardware. It's in a, an elliptical sun-synchronous orbit. That means that its orbit is such that the uh, oblateness of the Earth twists the orbit around at one degree, more or less one degree per day to match the motion of the sun across uh, as the Earth moves around the sun. Uh, it's in an elliptical orbit. It comes down to about 290 kilometers when it's uh, on the sunny side and on the dark side of the Earth it goes up to about 1,000 kilometers. And this, of course, reduces orbital decay because it spends a lot of time a long way you know, at higher altitudes and then it gets close so it can perform imaging when there's light. It does have hardware to periodically reboost the orbit. It'll do this several times over its lifetime. Uh, the elliptical orbit, incidentally, also makes it slightly more difficult for people on the ground to image the satellite to get a clue of what it is. And the master of this, or the best person to have taken an image of a KH-11 satellite, is Ralph uh, Van Der Berg. Uh, Van Der Berg, not Vandenberg. Uh, and he uses a 10-inch telescope. He's in the Netherlands. And yeah, it looks like it could be a Hubble. It's very hard to get these images. And he does some great images of satellites out there recently took images of the X-37. I think he's the only person to have taken images of, um, of astronauts on EVA, you know, tiny little specks seen next to the space station. So that was pretty amazing. Uh, one reason actually that this might have, or one factor that might have you know, contributed to this being declassified is that earlier this year, NROL 71 launched and this doesn't this is widely believed to be a new generation of Intel you know, imaging satellites but its orbit is different it's not in this sun synchronous orbit instead it's in like a super synchronous orbit so it goes the opposite direction it precesses the opposite direction due to the oblateness of the earth it shifts westwards at two degrees per day therefore it's three degrees on average it comes back to its original orientation every 120 days or so and that might mean that might be a good thing for them it, i think it might allow them to image things with different uh, solar orientations to get more detail on some sites it's not really clear but yeah this one obviously launched earlier this year it had been delayed instead of latin they had Klingon on the patch, but unfortunately that patch never made it to the final version. We got a rather more boring version. <laughs> it, it had a few uh, failures before launch, but it did eventually get going. And yeah, the fireball wasn't quite as impressive because it was those RS-68B engines. So yeah, it's uh, definitely, uh, I, I don't know, there's a... <laughs> I don't want the whole comment section to get stuck on whether this was legal or not, whether this is good or not. I just thought it was interesting to see this image come out here and just show you 
how good US spy satellites are, even if they are eight-year-old US spy satellites. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe. Thank <laughs> you.